Hello everybody, today we'll be working on uh, a flash drive that just arrived. As you can see, it's a almighty 512 megabyte microcruiser. Uh, I don't really see them too much coming in no more, but nonetheless, some important information is on there and I wanted to share a specific technique that I'll be using for this re recovery of this drive today. Um, first, uh, let's begin by opening up this unit and uh, it's been looked at by someone previously as you can tell there are some uh, bite marks on the side here which is uh, which isn't bad Sandisk cruisers they're pretty known for failed connectors so the fact that somebody actually went in um, hoping to fix that is encouraging just as long as you know they're up to the up to the task. Connector repair job is something very, very simple. Uh, but uh, devices that are older, devices that are um, coming out on big controllers like this, as opposed to let's say something that is a bit more modern and uh, would have smaller controller like that or even smaller that comes after. Um, there is a, something um, that complicates the recovery process on these devices. And uh, this unit specifically um, has a controller 20-99-00099-2. Uh, In some cases, I can't recall if it's 0099 or 00121. Uh, that can be resolved as a chip off. I know for sure that at least a couple of them I had been able to recover successfully with the chip off uh, using uh, uh, software once the NAND is read. These units often do encrypt data on them and uh, the NAND um, extraction becomes useless in that case because uh, simulation of that encryption, I mean at least with traditional tools for this kind of work is not available. Maybe some companies do have ways around it, but I'm going to believe it when I see it. The first thing I see here is that it's an um, older type. It's got a TSOP48 memory on it. And from a quick glance, the connector is fully intact and attached. On any SanDisk, connector would be like a first thing to look at because, like I said, they're pretty vulnerable in that spot. On these older models, it's not so much of an issue because uh, even though the cutout is here and it's pretty big, the flex line falls on something else. Uh, on the newer units, and I mentioned that before in videos, the flex line... Um, lines up with this cutout right here in the middle so if it gets bent that's what goes first but here I can tell for sure like I mean all these are fully attached there is no trouble there so how are we going to resolve this case today um, well it could be a good idea to uh, um, remove the memory component read it out since it's only 512 megabytes um, at least take an image of the uh, physical content of this unit so you can have it as a backup uh, but uh, what I have here um, right here and right here are the two donor devices that we will try to uh, put in use to get the data off of this one so when I plug this flash drive in nothing happens as if I didn't even plug it in there are no uh, um, the LED doesn't go on, and I don't think anything it has anything to do with that capacitor that just came off. Just for confirmation, let me just quickly put it back on. So I'm gonna go plug it in now. 
no signs of life. This is the NAND, this is the controller. Uh, we're going to look at the um, uh, part number of the board, 54500440 revision 2. To the don two donors that I got look very, very similar. Their design is very similar. Where it differs is this area. As you can see, the layout is slightly different. The components are arranged slightly different. Both have 99-2 controller on them, but the boards, board numbers are different. So it's 5450-443 revision 2, 5450-440 revision 2. Our board is 440, as you can see. So we're going to use 4440. So what's so special about this device? Well, first of all, this device works. And second of all, it's got a socket on it. The socket is there for a reason. The socket is there so that you can just open it up. And uh, take the chip out without having it soldered on. So yeah, you guessed it right, I made this flash drive specifically for this reason, to recover it a little bit quicker. Um, this drive obviously has it still attached, so we're gonna go ahead and remove it. Why am I marking up the con controller, you may ask? Uh, and uh, the reason for doing that is actually the fact that uh, whatever is tied up to the encryption is inside of this controller. So if our controller is dead on this unit, transplanting it over is not going to solve it but if something else is not powering on devi the device we're basically moving working critical parts onto uh, from non-working board onto a working host board uh, this NAND that's in here our donor NAND I'm also going to go to the side It right there. I'm going to put a small X on here. It goes this way. Okay, so sand disk on the bottom, Ooh, connectors on the left. more flux So this is our pair of components that we're going to need to uh, move. But we do need to remove the controller that was on there previously. They're not compatible for these models.
Okay, at this point I want to inspect all of the um, contacts, make sure that everything is good. Yeah, I think it's safe to assume that those are pretty good. Let's test it out. We got the light. And what do we have here? The 512 megabyte unit. Close this up. Go into our studio, which is going to go and view and edit. Um, as you can see, it came right up. That's data. Uh, without compatible donor, this is just not going to happen. Uh, also, the fact that I had these um, uh, sockets also beneficial. We don't have to do much uh, in terms of the NAND. Just remove it, clean it. Putting it back on the board and technically uh, attaching it to the board isn't a big issue, but it just makes it nice and neat when you don't have to just put it in, click it in and good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this data for the clients. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time.